Commission. Good afternoon. Today, the United States of America is changing its relationship with the people of Cuba. In the most significant changes in our policy in more than 50 years, we will end an outdated approach that for decades has failed to advance our interests, and instead, we will begin to normalize relations between our two countries. Through these changes, we intend to create more opportunities for the American and Cuban people and begin a new chapter among the nations of the Americas. Resultado de un diálogo al más alto nivel que incluyó una conversación telefónica que sostuve ayer con el presidente Barack Obama se ha podido avanzar en la solución de algunos temas de interés para ambas naciones. There's a complicated history between the United States and Cuba. Esta decisión del presidente Obama merece el respeto y reconocimiento de nuestro pueblo. Hemos acordado el restablecimiento de las relaciones diplomáticas. Esto no quiere decir que lo principal se haya resuelto. El bloqueo económico comercial y financiero que provoca enormes daños humanos y económicos a nuestro país debe cesar. Todos somos americanos. Change is hard in our own lives and in the lives of nations. And change is even harder when we carry the heavy weight of history on our shoulders. But today we are making these changes because it is the right thing to do. Today, America chooses to cut loose the shackles of the past so as to reach for a better future for the Cuban people, for the American people, for our entire hemisphere, and for the world. Thank you. God bless you, and God bless the United States of America. is very difficult because of everyday life. Everyday life is very, very difficult. Um, we make lots of jokes about the situation. And one of my favorites is, which are the three main achievements of the revolution? Healthcare, education, sports. Which are the three main failures? Breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Because it's everyday life things that are difficult in Cuba. You see, people, lots of people have difficulty with water supply, with electricity supply, where they don't have, they don't, perhaps they have enough food, but they don't want the food they want. Uh, there are limitations in, the, in housing, for example. The country has a very extreme shortage of housing, and the conditions of housing are generally poor, and so on. And for a country with such a, it's not an expression that I'm very fond of, but I use it occasionally, human capital. This is a country which has a fantastic human capital because the population is so educated. We don't deserve to live like this. I love Cubans, they're very good-hearted people. They don't eat, they don't have medicines, they're always laughing and dancing. Cuban people, has passed through a lot. I mean, this has been uh, many years uh, with many difficulties. Uh, you can see that instantaneously when we heard the news, 
uh, there was a lot of expectation of uh, happiness. Um, some people were desperate, you know. Uh, our people, uh, many of them suffers a lot. And they hope this is going to be a way to improve their lives. And I, I think the same. The people in, in war, but it's a silent war. Uh, I think, yes, maybe there are some changes, but I think they are not very deep changes. In, in, the, in the main structure, the scenes continue being on, uh, the same, I think. Uh, there are, like, uh, when you make up uh, your face, I think those, those changes are like makeup. It's, it's a country with no culture of debate. So people know that the dissenting is not generally appreciated, officially appreciated. So they would rather go by the script. And they, there are things that they know they have to say, and they will say it. We have been told to think in a certain way, to speak a certain speech, and uh, I mean that's that has been for me had been devastating for people. Dissent in this situation amounts to treason, and that's the official take on the uh, on dissent. Uh, I'm so sorry because in dissent there is so much value. People patting patting you on the shoulder and saying you're okay, no problem. That's not good. <laughs> you need people to tell you no. This is not good, you need this and that, you have to correct this and that. People are not happy because of this and that. You need that. You need dissent. Dissent is part of healthy exchange in society. I remember I was in class uh, when uh, the president of Cuba and the president of the United States spoke on TV. Uh, so some people came running, I, I can remember, and said, uh, the president is going to speak on TV, on national TV. And then we heard what well, he was saying. I was like, wow, I mean, this is shocking because it's very surprising. I mean, we, I, I've never expected this. Uh, I'm almost 30 years. I have never seen these words coming from uh, the president of Cuba, I mean, or the president of the United States. And when we, we know that news, we, we, we say, wow, it's incredible, because it's, uh, it's amazing to, to see two people uh, working together in this work of reconciliation and the peace. Uh, last December 17th, when the whole news, uh, the whole breaking news, every, everyone thought like, Everything's going to happen right now. That can't happen. The political processes are very slow. Uh, everything is very surprised about it because there were no previous information concerning that point. And sometimes uh, um, people was looking at TV and suddenly they announced they has a, um, an agreement to change the political prisoners. And so uh, on the spice they were in the United States and also they talk about uh, beginning again a relationship between Cuba and the United States. Everybody was surprised. And when I was in Germany, I didn't, I wasn't expecting it to happen, so I was in Germany and I was checking the news and uh, the news was that Alan Gross had been released um, from the jail, uh, from the prison here and that the three left, the three Cubans that were left in prison still had, had already returned. I mean, they were already back home. So, and that the president was going to make an announcement at, at noon. I think the December the 17th is the first step for the a long walk. The Cuban people uh, think in the first moment, oh, it's, uh, <laughs> the, <laughs> it's heaven here, no? Because we will have internet, we will have uh, free uh, uh, troubles. Uh, trips, uh, but no, we know that this is a long uh, walk. Because lots of mistakes have been made in, con in conducting the country, but none of, none of them are from the people. They are the government's mistakes. But people want to make their own mistakes. They want to decide, have a say in their lives. And I think this is important 
And I think this is a big failure of the Cuban situation that they don't, they want the best for the people. Of course, I, of course they want the best for the people. I have no doubt of that. <laughs> they want everything to be perfect and people to be happy. But people are not happy if they don't have a say in their, li in their lives. If they cannot decide in their own lives. Even if you're, you have the best intentions, you have to count on people. And you, have to, you have to let them decide. <clears throat> and I hope that, this, that we, are, we are getting there somehow. crazy that a country that has over one million college graduates have no general access to the internet. When you visit other places, you know that everyone in the world is connected, <laughs> but we, you can have connection with Cuba. So you have Skype, you have WhatsApp, you have Facebook, you have Twitter, and you can communicate with everyone. <laughs> and here you can do, and, and we hope that someday in not a very future, not, not in a very distant future, we can have it here too, and we can communicate with friends and family that doesn't live in Cuba anymore. A part of the world, we are like, here, we don't know anything about it. Um, that's really difficult. Uh, it's not only with the United States, it's like uh, with the whole world, and that's very sad. El, la información técnica, la información técnica y la información en valores le permite a la gente empoderarse, empowerment, aquí lo usamos también. ¿Qué significa adquirir conocimientos y habilidades para mejorar su estándar de vida, más allá de la crisis que haya económica? Les permite también adquirir habilidades sociales para tener una mejor familia, para tener una mejor convivencia en su barrio, para hacerse mejor persona. As a university student, I sort of get a internet quota. I get like, right now they sort of enlarged it. It's like 150 megabytes per, mo per month. And that's not so much, but we, we get into Facebook, we get into Twitter, not that much. But yeah, it's like five years ago, that wouldn't happen. So it's changing very slowly. When I was studying at university, I had the possibility to use internet, but it was a very slow connection. Um, I can find all the information I need sometimes, and even we had some uh, web page that we were not allowed to access then. Um, and now I have no place where to access to. Um, the government say, uh, they say no, they in fact they uh, had the possibility to access the internet, but it's expensive for me. I can't pay that money, so I, I have no idea. With like 20 years uh, uh, behind you guys, and that feel bad. It's difficult for us, for instance, uh, more of my family lives in the United States. I have uh, three sisters, um, all of them live in the United States, in Florida. We have a thing, concept here in Cuba, that is called the baguette, el baguette, the package, which is a package of uh, videos, movies, uh, uh, shows, uh, t TV shows, um, and that rolls from computer to computer, from hard, hard drive to hard drive, and that's how we keep updated <laughs> that, uh, of the things that are happening in the world. I don't even know where this come from. Everyone, everyone's got it. I don't know. It's like magic. It's a new way to to get information. I don't know where it come from. I just know the people sell it, and it's one cook or two cooks uh, for I don't know, uh, 500 mega. Uh, 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 Huh? One, one giga, I, I, I'm not really sure. It's one cook and the people pass along, we, we buy it and it's every, every week. And you can find there, I don't know, 
pages from internet, uh, novels, uh, I don't know, everything. It's communicating again, todos juntos. Uh, uh, all people need communication. And uh, so Cuba needs communication with the war. A lot of a lot of people is very optimistic about the all the new changes. For example, Netflix already opened up to like since last uh, Monday. Netflix opened up play.google.com also opened up, um, and it's there's like a some attempts to approach to the to an island to a almost uh, version market the is available now for the American companies. What do you do you know about people who are buying Netflix who are buying these things? Are people actually doing it? No, no, no. We, Netflix is not uh, is not useful for us since we have so such a little um, bandwidth. And I think that opening our doors to the United States, it's a great step. So if we can uh, improve our relationships, the interchange, Cubans could have a better uh, wash, if I can say, a better perspective of what is the world, the real world. So I think that interchange would be very, very help, helpful, is that okay? For Cuban people. So we can learn from you and you can learn from us too. Because we have many good things, many uh, abilities or talents that we have to show, but we don't have the chance to to interchange, to to get relationships. So I hope we can have a door that shows us how good could be our country if we do the right things. Perhaps many things that you have done in your country. For a long time, like, like, like 30 years, mentioning anything religious was in such bad taste. It was like saying four-letter words in public or something like that, you see? Yeah. Common religious expression, God willing, God forbid, that kind of thing was erased from the common language. Como católicos y como el pueblo, todo es de desear una, unos mayores espacios para la libertad de expresión, que es muy importante y que queda a veces muy limitada eh, por los condicionamientos ideológicos. As eh, John eh, says, the Pope Juan Pablo II says, I hope Cuba eh, opens her doors to the world and the world opens their doors to Cuba. Open, open door from Cuba, open door from war. Say San Juan Pablo II in your visit. Por parte del papel del Papa Francisco, eh, ciertamente ambos presidentes lo han reconocido mm -hmm. y agradecido. También la Iglesia cubana en ese momento se dirigió al Papa para agradecer mm -hmm. su, su gestión. He's the pontiff and it means bridge builder. So that's basically what he did was it, through diplomacy, through diplomatic channels from what I've read. He um, worked with the two governments or, and, and helped to bring this about. But what you hear is that the church have, uh, uh, I don't know, it's, it's the, the media. 
uh, for, for the reconciliation, you say, wow, we, we are very happy for that. We are very happy because the Holy Father uh, opened the, the, the Vatican for, for that conversation. And we don't know how many channels uh, inside the Vatican and the Cuban church, uh, the, the different governments uh, use to, to make this, uh, to have these conversations. Yo diría que, que los problemas de la población católica son los mismos de todo el pueblo. No, no haría una distinción, porque económico, todos los cubanos de un modo u otro, o una gran mayoría de cubanos, eh, se encuentran eh, en una, eh, un desnivel económico respecto a las, eh, los salarios que perciben y el precio de los productos. O sea que... Eh, ciertamente el nivel de acceso a, la, a los bienes de consumo para algunas familias es bastante reducido. Y son católicos o no católicos, es decir, ahí hay una dificultad. I wanted things better for people. I know there's a lot of the people struggle here a lot. We must help people to realize how much they worth. I think this is uh, an opportunity, this will be an opportunity for people to improve their lives, for people to open their minds, uh, for people to know people from other places, uh, another point of views, I think. And this will help Cuban people because we, most of our time <coughs> uh, has been I mean, close to the world, maybe. I don't know if, uh, if I said it correctly. But uh, what I want to say is, this is an opportunity to open our lives and our uh, knowledge and our culture to other people. And also an opportunity to improve economically. La situación económica de la Iglesia Católica en Cuba también es eh, muy precaria. Dependemos normalmente de instituciones extranjeras, de Europa, especialmente de Alemania, de Italia o de España, y de instituciones eh, de la Iglesia en Estados Unidos, que envían recursos económicos para poder sostener eh, a los sacerdotes, para poder sostener las actividades. ¿no? Pero sí, la Iglesia Católica en Cuba sigue siendo una referencia moral y una referencia ética importantísima. La Iglesia Católica en Cuba, a lo largo de estas últimas décadas, se ha ganado el respeto del pueblo. Eh, ¿Por qué? Porque, eh, a mí, desde mi punto de vista, ha permanecido muy fiel a sus principios. Porque nos parece muy ambivalente y muy esquizofrénico que nos pidan a las instituciones no gubernamentales ayuda para rescatar los valores de esta sociedad que está tan deteriorado y que cuando nosotros les propongamos un programa con, la, con, con lo cual podemos contribuir, no quiere decir que nosotros tengamos la respuesta absoluta, pero es nuestro aporte. Y es nuestro aporte que como institución, como iglesia, tenemos el derecho de, 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 de ejercitarlo, de llevarlo a cabo. Es, nuestra, es nuestro derecho como iglesia. Nosotros somos parte de la sociedad, nosotros también somos cubanos. Hay una anécdota del Cardenal Pio Lai en una universidad americana. Le preguntaron, ¿por qué razón la Iglesia enseña economía si en todas partes 2 más 2 es 4? Y el Cardenal respondió, el Cardenal Pio Lai era prefecto de la Sagrada Congregación para la Educación Católica en los años 90. Y él respondió, la Iglesia, igual que los demás, enseña que 2 más 2 es 4, pero también enseña inspirada en el Evangelio, que 2 más 2 es siempre 4, sin importar los intereses económicos, políticos, para respetar los derechos de las personas. Y ese es el aporte de la Iglesia Católica. Si no puede ser, porque no, porque la respuesta es no, entonces ya nosotros buscaremos la estrategia y la manera de hacerlo en otro momento. Pero no vamos a renunciar a hacerlo, porque es nuestro derecho. La Catholic Church has always been perceived for the government, by the government On, on political uh, grounds. So it's either an ally or an, an, an enemy. And the church is neither, you see. 
The church in politics, it has a word in politics, but it's non nonpartisan. The church cannot take sides in the political arena. But it has a word to say from an ethical point of view, from a moral point of view, of course. Things have to be conduct conducted in honestly, and the, the church stands for the poor and for uh, disempowered. And this, this is Catholic. This is a, the essential of the Catholic Church. Como dije antes, de parte de Estados Unidos, de su gobierno, se ve como un deseo de que esto avance más rápido. Aquí en Cuba vemos que de, oficialmente hay como más cautela. Hay que esperar. Porque, insisto en esto, ha habido declaración de intenciones positivas de ambas partes, pero hace falta que las intenciones se conviertan en acciones. To me, I felt like, wow, we're going to be, we actually, Dr. Monteiro actually made it happen. We're going to be part of history. And I, I, I guess that's where I was. I was pretty excited that I was firsthand be able to witness and see Cuba before everything starts changing. You know, I knew quite a bit about uh, Cuba, or at least I thought I knew quite a bit about Cuba. Uh, however, one thing is knowing about it through media, through reading, but another thing is to come and see for yourself. And um, when I touched the airport here, it was suddenly, as much as I knew Cuba is in a time warp, I really experienced Cuba de facto is in a time warp, and a uh, time warp of many decades. And uh, it stunned me, it stunned me that uh, it should be that far behind. I really thought there was going to be a big sense of hostility between Americans and Cubanos. Uh, a lot of things I read and a lot of things we were told beforehand were be, try to blend, don't stick out, try to speak in hushed tones, don't be too loud, you don't want everyone to know that you're American. Um, and when we got here, it was overwhelmingly the opposite. I remember walking down the street the first day and someone asked, oh, where are you from? They heard our American accents and speaking English and they said, oh, USA, you're from USA? My favorite country, oh, I love America. And it was just so shocking. It's coming from a country where, uh, and in my background, uh, to, to at least have the ability to practice your religion and to uh, and to do so without fear of, uh, of there being some sort of consequence for doing so from the government uh, has been, if you will, a given. It's been something that, uh, that we look at as, uh, as much as a right as to wake up and breathe in the morning. And here, I don't sense that for the last 50 years that has been the case. My number one takeaway from here is that Cuba wants and deserves uh, change and, and freedom. I mean, I think coming from the United States, we take a lot of our freedoms for granted. Uh, being able to speak openly about uh, the government, any corporation, anyone, uh, that we have uh, the ability to work hard and, uh, and take home money to have a nice house and food. And uh, here, the people don't have those same luxuries. It was so nice to spend time discussing different issues here in Cuba and our perspectives on it with uh, the context of actually being here. And I think that really made a difference because you were able to have people's stories and, and really be able to have tangible anecdotes that this is people's everyday lives and, and just being able to witness it and to hear their testimonies and their, their stories was just really wonderful. And I see it as hope in the absence of hopelessness because before there was hopelessness when uh, relations would not even, nobody was even talking about relations between U.S. and Cuba and it was very like head to head and now there's uh, things are opening up and people are, people still understand there's a long way to go but there's no hopelessness, there's hope. That we need hope. Hope to construct, to build a better Cuba for us. I think that uh, youth uh, should see something more than promises. 
and leader changes because of course uh, people want to find a better life, a better uh, opportunities and they don't have it until now here in Cuba. So I, I, I would, la ha would like to have for youth hope and also um, that they can see, they can touch changes and opportunities, really opportunities. What is the feeling of the people? Not, not of the government, not of the officials, the people. This is where they have hope. Hope is the word. A promising time for all of us here, for both countries. We have a lot of hopes that uh, we can improve our country, that we, we want to maintain the, the good things that we have until now. Uh, and I have some changes that help us to to have a better future here in Cuba. We have been like a stuck for a long time, so we are full of hope. But we think it's like very slowly. I would like it to be faster, but I would rather it to be good, to be well done, rather than faster. So I think for things to be well done, they need to be done like slowly with very caution. And I think we're, we're doing it that way and that's, that's great. There's an expectation and also a skepticism in some people because we are hurry. I mean, we want the thing to happen very fast and we know it can be uh, this way. Uh, but I think, generally, uh, it means hope for us, I mean, and we are very happy. I, I, have, I have one big aspiration, you see, and I want my country to be normal. Va más allá del momento político conveniente para ambos gobiernos y para ambos, y beneficioso para ambos pueblos. Creo que hay que mirar con la esperanza a una relación eh, normal, donde los países, Cuba, entre en el escenario internacional y en el escenario bilateral con Estados Unidos de una manera serena, en que, insisto, las instituciones democráticas sean reconocidas y los derechos de los ciudadanos sean plenamente respetados claves que marcó el ENEC que fueron desear que la Iglesia Católica en Cuba fuera una iglesia orante, de una espiritualidad profunda, una iglesia encarnada, es decir, vinculada a las necesidades y a los problemas reales de, del pueblo cubano, de la sociedad cubana, y una iglesia misionera, una iglesia que sale, que busca a los que están alejados, alejados de la misma iglesia, bautizados en la misma iglesia, pero también alejados en la sociedad que ni siquiera conocen a Dios o provienen de otros, de otros ámbitos o de otras creencias, incluso del ámbito del, del, del ateísmo. Yo lo que sueño para mi país es que ese miedo que nos congela, que nos paraliza, que, que no nos deja avanzar, desaparezca. Yo sueño que esas personas que no son capaces de dejar a uno eh, hacer por su país experimenten lo que significa la libertad